Hello everyone, uh, my name is Joseph Holmes. I'm the Council's Executive Director for Resources. And I'm just going to uh, introduce some colleagues to discuss the budget for the 2021-22 financial year. So if I can just quickly hand over to Ross. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Councillor Ross McKinnon, um, Ward Member for Bradfield and Executive Member for Finance, Property Commissioning and Economic Development. Okay, and hi, I'm Gabrielle Mancini. I'm the Economic Development Manager. Thank you very much both. So we're just going to take you through some slides just setting out the Council's budget for the year ahead. Uh, and here's some of the things that we run through. So we talk a little bit about, bit about COVID, um, the medium term financial strategy, and then, and then the two uh, main budget papers. Uh, and, and just to say we we'll welcome responses uh, to the newsletter uh, in the coming days so that we can include any of those responses in the final papers which go to uh, our members at the start of March. So first just a bit of context to the budget so we know that Covid has had a uh, significant impact the council has received uh, a substantial amount of funding from central government non-ring fenced fund funding alone is just under 10 million pounds uh, and that has helped to support the underlying provision of services by the council um, and has enabled us to uh, show an underspend of just over three million pounds uh, at the moment, which is going to the executive on the 11th of February. Uh, specifically for businesses, there's been a further amount of support come through. So initially there was a range of business rate reliefs uh, of which we distributed just under 40 million pounds. And then there's been a further um, business grants of over 30 million pounds. We'll come on to those a little bit later, but quite a lot of support has come through the council to be distributed through to businesses. And we keep seeing uh, that impact of the pandemic, uh, uh, both in the current year and importantly uh, for this budget for the next financial year. So into 21 22, uh, the council will receive just over three million pounds in non reinvents uh, funding and also some income compensation where we've seen losses in income, uh, for example, car parking income for quarter one, and then also some ability to alleviate some of the pressures on our collection funds. So that's where we uh, compare the difference between the amount of business rates and council tax we expect to collect and the amount that we actually do receive. And I think then uh, as part of COVID and the longer term impact on the budget um, will be business rates and, and, and what government are doing around both the lookers to the future of business rates and then also the potential increased amount of business rate retention, which the council may be able to receive uh, locally in the future. And then we also need to look at that longer term impact on, on the budget and then behaviours around that, uh, specifically around the council's uh, 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 budget. And the, one of the main items again there would be around car parking, car parking income, but also a range of our other services will be impacted through COVID as well. One of the budget papers which, are going, which, which, which goes through to full council and is the, uh, the executive on the 11th of February uh, is the medium term financial strategy. So that's the one which sets out the position over the next four years. And as a reference just before, there is some impact that we've included there uh, due to COVID. And the important uh, point of the MTFS is that it tries to align our, our financial position our, and our expenditure and income over the next four years to help the council deliver its overall council strategy. Okay, at this point, I'll hand over to Councillor McKinnon to take you through both the capital and the revenue budget. Yeah, thanks very much, Joseph. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to, to take you through the, the capital and revenue budget. Um, we have a responsibility here as a council to invest in the future of the district to ensure that the, uh, that the district remains a great place to live, work and learn. Um, what we can see here is the, the capital programme over the next three years is investing £123 million uh, over the next three years. Uh, just some, some headline areas where that's going. This pie chart here in front of us, it, it breaks down the spending by council strategy priority. Uh, might require a little bit of translation here, but if you look at the largest chunk there, so nearly 51 million uh, developing local infrastructure, including housing. Uh, that infrastructure, of course, uh, includes roads programmes, you know, highways improvement, uh, active travel uh, schemes like, like cycle routes, walking routes as well. Um, and there's, I think, £2 million of flood, in, uh, flood defences included in that infrastructure spending. Uh, just going around in an anti-clockwise direction, supporting everyone to reach their full potential. So the bulk of that is education schemes, of course, 32 million in there. Uh, that's new schools, it's refurbishments and extensions to existing, uh, existing schools uh, as well. 12.7 uh, million uh, for vulnerable children and adults um, achieving better outcomes. A good example of that spend would be the, the extension of our Castlegate 
uh, respite facility where, uh, where where parents of uh, severely disabled children uh, can, um, can, uh, can 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 use the facility to, to provide some uh, much needed respite care for them. Uh, business as usual, maybe not as exciting as some of the other priorities, but uh, 12 and a half million there, really improving the council's internal processes and, and efficiencies, uh, things like digitization and doing things in a, in a more efficient way to benefit the taxpayer. Um, and 13 and a half million there on, um, on maintaining a green district. Uh, the council has um, set out on a journey towards net zero uh, by, uh, by, by 2030. Uh, a big chunk of that spend is on a solar farm uh, the proposals for a solar farm out, um, out at Graisley, um, and I think that's going to come up uh, a little bit later on in this slide. Of course, when we talk about figures like 123 million, it's important to, to reassure uh, residents and businesses that that level of investment is sustainable. Now, not all of it is funded by external borrowing. A, a large amount does come from central government, Section 106 and SIL contributions. Uh, but the borrowing that is required to, to support the capital programme, um, that has to be repaid and it has to be repaid sustainably. So uh, I'm happy to confirm that the, the, the financing costs that go through the revenue budget, that's the repayments and the interest on the council's external borrowing, that's roughly about 9% of the, the revenue budget. And it's forecast to remain so uh, throughout the, the life of the MTFS over the next four years. So um, that borrowing is affordable and it is uh, sustainable. Okay, so some uh, specific details uh, about the capital programme then. Uh, we can see that there's a 12 and a half million directly uh, going into the environment strategy. Uh, the bulk of that is a, a solar farm. The proposal is to, to build a, a solar farm out in the east of the district. It's going to provide clean energy and cheaper energy as well to the council as well as reducing our, our carbon emissions we're very excited about that um, in the people directorate so that the council split into three directorates so people place and resources um, the bulk of that is, is the education schemes that i mentioned earlier on and uh, about 12 million pounds for improved highway schemes uh, to keep the district uh, moving and running smoothly uh, other items uh, we are um, together with network rail and the local enterprise partnership funding upgrades to, to Newbury uh, railway station, uh, the funding for road infrastructure I've touched on already and active travel. So it's not just about the car, of course, uh, cycling and walking, active travel routes, healthy travel routes, really important uh, to the health of the district. Um, linking on from that half a million pounds on on-street electric vehicle charging. Again, clean transport is at the heart of what we're doing. And we're very happy to receive 1.7 million pounds from central government uh, to fund uh, the, the extension of our full fibre rollout. Uh, so that's um, you know, super fast broadband uh, being extended into the district. And then once that's done, um, offshoots to, 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 to housing schemes and residential schemes can, can flow from that. Uh, one new thing that we've done this year is to take um, almost a top slice of the community infrastructure levy fund. So this is the uh, the levy that developers have to pay uh, when they are, are um, awarded planning permission for and they build out uh, new housing developments. Um, traditionally, that pot goes into a, a central fund at the council. Parish councils get a little bit of it as well. But what we wanted to do was just to speed up the distribution of that money to community groups or grassroots groups who really need it. So we took half a million pounds this year and we invited bids from various community groups across the district. So that's people like scout troops, uh, parish councils, um, people who run um, sort of env environmental facilities like community ponds, all sorts of things. And uh, we, we sat on a panel, uh, myself and, and a few other colleagues, and we awarded, I think we ended up giving uh, just £490,000, wasn't it, um, in, um, in grants. Lots of village halls being refurbished now that otherwise would have had to wait a little while before doing that. Uh, playgrounds uh, for, um, for young children being, being enhanced. We've got community hubs in Calcott. We've got the, the pond that I mentioned in East Ellesley. Um, I think there was about 16 or 18 uh, successful bids there. Um, so really, really pleased with that because those groups are getting the funds a lot quicker than they would have done otherwise. Uh, onto the revenue budget then, and I guess the headline announcement of any budget is the, the council tax proposals. Uh, very pleased this year not to be proposing uh, the maximum council tax increase. So uh, we could have gone up to 5%, 499 uh, percent. That's a combination of the council tax rise and the adult social care precept. Um, we've managed to keep the rise just to the 1.99% council tax. We've opted not to take um, any of the adult social care precept this year. I think our residents have had uh, a pretty tough time over the last year, so, so we're happy to give their finances a bit of a break in that respect. Um, it's also worth mentioning, though, that that's only been possible because of the extensive support that we've had from central government uh, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, we've received nearly £10 million of unring fence funding to support the budget in the, the current financial year. 
um, as well as lots of other support as well in terms of um, replenishing lost income that the council's had. So um, that, that's been crucial, as has, to be honest, the excellent financial control that this council has displayed over many years, uh, which has meant that the financiers are in a very good shape uh, to allow us really to, uh, to give residents a bit of a break this year. So just the 1.99% rise in council tax. Also very happy to confirm that we're continuing to support uh, those on the, the lowest incomes in the district. Um, so there's going to be a, a council tax reduction scheme for those um, those of working age and claiming universal credit. You know, there are terms and conditions associated with that one. Uh, but that scheme has been operating this year, whereby we can give up to £150 off a council tax bill uh, for those who are, who are really struggling uh, to, to pay uh, the council tax there. Um, also in the revenue budget, we've got savings and income generation proposals of 3.7 million. Like last year, very happy to confirm that that does not involve any cuts whatsoever to frontline services. It involves the, the council being more efficient, doing things in a more uh, transformative and efficient way. Uh, we've got reduced borrowing costs this year because interest rates are very low and the, the Public Works Loan Board's um, borrowing rate has dropped back down to what we would consider to be sustainable levels, uh, as well as income generation schemes in there. So. Uh, the council is uh, trying always to, to do more with the money that it raises to prevent us from having to uh, always go for the maximum council tax. So uh, very pleased with the revenue budget this year. Um, and the final point on this slide, there's investment in the council strategy priorities, as well as COVID recovery of nearly five million pounds, which I think is going to be detailed on the next slide. Um, so yeah, some headline investment there, but 3.2 million of that is to, to deal with COVID or expected COVID pressures um, in the year to come. Uh, we've already seen you know th th things like car parking income dropping away um, so lots of support still probably required um, in the budget in the year to come um, 150,000 for the master plan works we're looking at Newbury town centre um, really trying to um, design and implement a new vision for what the town centre is going to look, look like over the, the medium term of course the, the retail industry and town centres in general uh, going through you know, transformative change at the moment um, the London Road Industrial Estates, uh, we're investing in the, the project to regenerate that, uh, hopefully to provide a, a, a top quality, high class uh, business and residential district just in the, the gateway to the town. A uh, really important priority of the, of the administration and the environment strategy. We've talked about we're moving the council to a green energy supply. We're um, obtaining more staffing support to achieve that strategy. Uh, so that will, um, that will definitely drive results in the coming years. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that, Ross. Uh, just a quick slide here on the business rate multiplier. So uh, this was provisionally announced just for Christmas and should be hopefully confirmed in the next few days. Uh, key thing as well for businesses is, is around any future announcements on any um, business rate reliefs which might come through. So we're expecting obviously some announcement on that at the budget on the 3rd of March. So we will distribute bills after uh, after that announcement has been made, if it is made. Um, and then we are, uh, that could potentially mean uh, that, that bills might go out a little bit later uh, than usual, but we wanted to avoid the issue where we have to uh, keep rebilling uh, businesses uh, in the new financial year. So we'll wait to see what that announcement is and what the impact uh, is on bills uh, going forward. I'll hand over to Gabrielle now. Great, um, thank you, Joseph. Um, so yeah, we know um, that the past year has been really difficult for um, a lot of us, but more so for our businesses than many others. Um, so we've been busy um, distributing millions of pounds in grants to local businesses. But before I touch on that, I'll just briefly mention a couple of other things that we've been doing to support local businesses, if I may. Um, so we've been working very closely with the Thames Valley Berkshire LEP um, to offer direct um, business support and signposting um, through the Berkshire Growth Hub. Um, and we've also done a couple of other things locally um, in order to mitigate the impact of the virus. Um, one of which um, is that we were one of the only authorities in the country to temporarily defer business rates completely to every local business, regardless of industry, um, in order to put very vital cash flow um, back into businesses' pockets when they most needed it. Um, you know, we also did a lot of temporary measures in town centres to support social distancing. We've been offering all manner of free advice um, to affected firms, and we've also been streamlining our processes, such as in planning and licensing, to help businesses to adapt and to reopen safely. Um, the national government um, coronavirus job retention scheme 
um, was also at one point at the height of lockdown, um, supporting over 20,000 local people um, to receive their income and to retain their jobs. So there has been a huge amount of support that has been made available. But in terms of the grants themselves, um, in the first lockdown last year, um, just over £29 million worth of grants were distributed to um, well over 2,000 local businesses. Um, and the feedback that we've got um, from many of those businesses is that, grant, that those grants were a complete lifeline at the most difficult and unprecedented time. Um, so that scheme has now closed. Um, and um, there are a number of schemes that we are still in the process of distributing. Um, so we are distributing um, money to firms who were forced to close in the both the national and local lockdowns that happened in November and December. Um, so mainly in retail, hospitality and leisure. And um, we've already distributed um, £1.3 million to those effective businesses and um, are still accepting applications for anybody who has not yet had funding for that. Um, and again, for December and January, um, those businesses who have been forced to close um, and cannot operate um, oftentimes in any capacity whatsoever um, are in receipt of local support, local revenue, local restriction support grants, sorry, and um, the, also the Christmas um, bonus for um, wet lead pubs who derive most of their income from alcohol um, as they were not able to operate at that time. So um, just over six million pounds has been paid out in those grants so far with yet more to come. We've also got a, a local additional restrictions grant scheme running um, to support those businesses that haven't necessarily had to close as a result of the restrictions, um, but who can demonstrate to us that they have been severely impacted as a result of the current situation. Um, and so we've um, paid out over £800,000 um, of that funding so far. Um, we're still accepting applications and will be until the end of March next year. Um, so I would just like to encourage any business who hasn't been in touch with us to apply for a grant under that scheme to please do so. Um, the team is working seven days a week and going through those very quickly in order to get that money out. Um, so please do, please do come to us um, if you need any help. And um, just to make the last point on that slide, with the Christmas bonus for wet lead pubs that I mentioned, um, we were also very keen to offer an additional support at local level on top of what the government has, um, has offered to us. So we did double that for all of the eligible pubs. So that's £45,000 in funding going out to local businesses that they wouldn't had, have had if they were operating in another local authority area. And we thought that was very important. So um, a very pretty comprehensive um, scheme um, for businesses um, with more to come. So um, please get in touch if you need us. Thank you, Gabrielle. Uh, so just in conclusion, um, just wrapping this up, uh, you, obviously there has to be that balance between investing in inf infrastructure and the, some of those capital investments that, that Ross highlighted earlier, alongside uh, the proposed council tax uh, rises. Um, from from 2022-23, um, yeah, there are a lot of unknowns out there, the future uh, uh, of business rates and the future of, sort of local government financing. Um, are, are all for review, but the council remains in a very financially resilient uh, uh, position. And, and lastly, there's some large investment uh, in infrastructure uh, across the district, um, which is really important to help keep the uh, district well prepared for the challenges that we face in the future and to help support uh, businesses into the long term. Thank you very much.